watching. I'm Nikki Beji and I work on the BBC World Service and I've just had an amazing audience here in Manila. Hi, hi to the plug. <laughs> hi motherfucking <laughs> Beji. <laughs> Hello everyone, Valor Morgulis. So, nandito tayo sa CCP. Actually, we start CCP pa pa eh. Parang punta tayo sa Star Theater. Nandito at ay siya na si John Tito. May concert dito. Pero sa Star Theater tayo pupunta. So, hahanapin ko. Excuse me, saan ko yung Star Theater? Okay, pagunta na ako sa Star Theater. Okay, we're here na. Rupa, do you have a time? No. Thank you. Nahirapan ko yun. Yes. Okay lang naman. Okay. It'll just about this, correct? Okay, papasok na tayo. Ay, medyo madinig. Dito na. Si Anya. Medyo madinig na. Saan nandito na kami sa tiyan? Okay. back in the Spanish era, where, where it's like, just like rap battling, there's two poets battling out each other, and there's someone in the middle who's hosting and being the referee, and there's an audience. The difference is that back then, they were given a topic, and each one has to, like, yeah. outsmart yeah. The, other, other, the other poet. In, in, some, in, in, in a way, it's similar to what's happening now, because it's basically the same formula, but now it's more inclined to the culture of rap. Right. In the movie Citizen Chick, and so you play a journalist, and we'll talk more about the film a bit later, but what prompted this career move? Well, um, I just asked myself, why the hell not? I'm in the business of telling stories as a journalist, and mm -hmm. this is another way of telling a story. Uh, I'm trying to learn the differences and similarities between telling a real-life story and non-fiction. And I feel like uh, it's a great way of exploring the intersections between different disciplines and kind of pushing the envelope because uh, at the end, the important thing is the message. Whether or not you're doing a film or you're doing a news report or doing a documentary, I think we can all agree that uh, 
the, the ultimate purpose is to convey something, a feeling or an idea to the audience. Now, I know that you both write about all manner of subjects, but what are you most passionate about as poets, Louise? Um, I think I am most passionate about LGBT rights, women's issues, the stigma against mental health. Um, I am an artist, but I am a Filipino first, so it's impossible not to have the events happening around you impact your work in some way. Um, same with Louise, I write about uh, LGBT rights as well, and um, I'm an advocate for free education, but I think the all-encompassing uh, the umbrella uh, under which my advocacy fall under uh, is basically human rights, just human rights in general. So you both said LGBT and we in parts of the world will say LGBTQI, there are a number of initials. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, so what is the state of LGBTQI rights here in, in the Philippines? Actually, um, the anti-discrimination bill is, uh, is uh, we, we still have yet to pass it. We still have yet to turn it into law. So we're pretty behind. <laughs> uh, you're an observational comedian. Is that the most popular form of comedy here? It's not the most popular right now, you know, uh, because uh, in, in, the, in the Philippines, the more popular ones are the variety show type, vaudeville type of comedy where you have um, two hosts that will do insult comedy in front of an audience and uh, get uh, laughs from there and then do uh, karaoke singing and some sketches on stage. But um, as we're doing stand-up here in the Philippines, more following is growing and more comedians are doing it and a lot of fans actually are, are watching it more. So uh, it's, it's pretty much growing healthier here in the Philippines. Well, um, obviously you can't see his t-shirt listening at home or wherever you're listening to the Arts Hour Tour, but it says, Comedy Manila. Is that actually a brand? Is that your one-man mission? What is it? This is actually a production house. We produce comedy shows here featuring uh, the best of uh, Filipino comedians, local, international. So um, uh, our goal is to make sure that Filipinos will know that you can make people laugh without insulting anyone. And just We're just sharing jokes and observations that everyone can relate to. So uh, it, it, we're doing a good job so far, you know. Yeah. People know me. Okay. <laughs> you are a Filipino rock icon. That hurts my back. <laughs> so you're a rock star, but you've yes, also found time to coach and judge on various Filipino versions of the TV talent show, The Voice. Yes, uh, I just I just felt it was time to. Uh, you know, I've been doing this for a while, so I felt it's time to pay it for it, as they say, right? So, with the experience I've been doing, I've been helping uh, young artists, kids, teens, and it's, uh, initially I was resistant to it, but uh, I've come to like it. What made you resist it? I just didn't, I didn't want to kill the joy out of music up for the kids, you know, I, mean, I felt like that. I didn't want them to come into it thinking, oh, it's a competition, music should be something enjoyed, celebrated, so I was not initially for that. But once I got in and I just sort of felt it out and I said, hey, I can have my voice in this. I can, I can put my stake in here and sort of, you know, uh, mold what's going what's to be going forward. Yeah. Since it's such a popular, like a medium right now. Like all these singing competitions. I mean, we're not, we're not talking about the Philippines, but we're talking about globally, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yeah, so I got my, my two cents in there and I'm trying to do my best. There you go. <laughs> Feminista, activista, artist, feminist, activist. So I'm just going to describe some of your standout works to give people an idea of why those three words are such accurate descriptions. So you currently have a work in a group show here called Female Fighter. It's an aluminium panel riddled with bullet holes in the shape of a Y. 
Your solo show last year was called Violence Need Not Be Bloody for It to Be Validated as Such. And there was one piece that spelt out the words womanhood is weapon, written in 5,000 ceramic cast bullets which were painted white. A one minute film clip being projected was actual footage of a woman at a crime scene sweeping away a pool of blood. It was her husband's. And I must mention the white dress which was cast as a replica of the one the Vice President wears. You called it, value is measured by the length of her skirt. Yes. Would you explain that piece first, then? Okay, um, let's start with that dress that I cast in. Um, if you can imagine, it's a white dress that is just hanging, but it's the exact identical dress that was worn by the Vice President of the Philippines. And that work stems from the inspiration of hearing our Commander-in-Chief um, make comments about her niece during a, a, an official event. And this was such a marker, a very good example on how um, toxic um, world leaders have become through their actions and speech that they can uh, display a pattern of misogyny, blatant misogyny, and the many forms of, of violence against women. So sexual harassment, catcalling, um, laughing at rape jokes, it's been a norm. And that dress, coming from someone as powerful as a vice president can just be reduced to the length of her skirt by another powerful um, dominating man, which happens to be our president. So that is very striking because these people are being followed by mil billions. Okay, and majority in our country, let's go back to Bamboo Song, yeah. which is such an inspiration in the 80s. Um, it, it talks about the pyramid, and it's the pyramid of a triangle where the rich, the, the very small percentage of the rich is on top, and the rest are the masses. But it's supposed to be the other way around. It's supposed to be upside down. We should be thinking of being pro-people, pro-poor. How do we help others? It's nice. They're appreciating the hospitality. Uh, you know, Filipinos are known for hospitality. You know, Filipinos, we welcome our guests. We welcome our guests with open arms and with a smile. Which is why our country got colonized by three countries. <laughs> First guest was Spain. Stayed for 333 years. At first, we never really thought they were colonizing us. We just thought we were overstayed. <laughs> 300 years, how many churches do we need in our place? <coughs> Being with Spain for 333 years made Filipinos one of the most religious people in the world. You can say it, you can tell it when Filipinos pray, because our eyes are closed, our cheeks are shaking, you know, there's a side tear for some reason. <laughs> but, you know, you see the most religious Filipinos praying not in church, you know, you see them uh, at the immigration line at the airport, that's where we all pray. <laughs> We all say the same prayer too, you know, like, Oh Lord, please don't let that man ask me too many questions. <laughs> I'm only here for vacation. <laughs> well, we can't, we can't broadcast fuck, darling. Oh, sorry. Do you want to just do it again with down the earth, screw the earth? Can we have screw? Mm. Screw the earth! Yeah. Can you do it? Please, says Nikki in my ear. You know this book, uh, suppressing the press is free done, you know? <laughs> An artist, you say fuck. <laughs> so I'm gonna say it, and then you guys like, laugh like it was really funny. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm expecting the Spanish guy to laugh. Out. <laughs> okay, there we go. Down there! <laughs> nice try, guys. Nice try. <laughs> Your film, Respect Them began life as a story about the friendship between a young rapper, Hendrix, played by Abra, 
and an older poet, Doc, who is from the martial law era under President Ferdinand Marcos. But the story evolved into the first feature film to depict the drugs war. It's your first movie. Why this subject matter? Well, I've always wanted to make a movie about the hip-hop culture in the Philippines. So it started as that, you know, about the lives of the modern poets and the poets during martial law. But when the when President Duterte sat in office and he launched his war on drugs that killed thousands of alleged drug users and pushers across the country, I, I felt that I needed, I needed to say something. Especially during the time when he allowed the burial of the late dictator in the National Heroes Cemetery. Cemetery. So this was um, the Philippine Supreme Court. Um, they voted to allow the body of former leader Ferdinand Marcos to be moved to the Heroes Cemetery in Manila. And that decision followed months of protests and many uh, said that Marcos's record of corruption and rights abuses meant he shouldn't be interred there. So this is what you're referring to. Yes, yes. I mean, it's, you know, the, there's protests of victims of the martial law era. They still, you know, proceeded with the with the burial, and it angered me a lot. And I thought that I should revise the script and make the setting of the script during the time when the the, the Philippines were were debating over this matter. So. How did the film and story change as you were actually shooting the project? Because I know it did, didn't it? Well, um, a lot of revisions happened during the filming of the shoot. A lot of consultations uh, with the creative team and even with actors like Abra, you know, uh, Bido de la Paz and everyone. We, they all had contributions with the film. What are you going to perform for us? This song is called King Inang Bayan. It translates to my motherland. You're smiling. In one way. You're no, listen, you, you only this for TV. You are the cheekiest look on your face. So, what do you mean in one way it translates to my motherland? In another way, it translates to mother. Ah, okay. Freaking country. But you're not actually using bad language, are you? Fantastic. Because you've been brought up. Ladies and gentlemen, Abra. Kayon, kalabaw na naman, nakakabagod. Araw-araw na lang, tagad ng sahod. Kumakalam na adyan, nagod sa landlord. Kaya para paraan, kamusta na? Mga kaibigan, ayos ba tayo dyan? Eto, na mga kailangan, parang kahapon na. Di na bago, pinandado, pinamanda.
I never have to do this with another producer, Nikki. <laughs> that make you feel really bad now. Oh, come on! Maybe you can make a list next time. Sorry, where is that? Right. Trip Monteras, are both these films, your film respect though? So, Atava Royo. Yes, we finished! <laughs> Can you just say hi? Uh, hi, hi to the vlog. To the vlog. Who should I say hello to? To the viewers. <laughs> yes. Hello to everybody watching. I have no idea who I'm talking to. <laughs> but I'm Nikki Beji and I work on the BBC World Service and I've just had an amazing audience here in Manila. Thank you. Abra <laughs> picture <laughs> Close to me, sir. 
who are you? The proud Lord said that I must bow so low. Only a cat of a different coat.